today we are going to talk about vaccines, what they are, possible COVID-19 vaccines and the ethical issues surrounding them. There has been a lot of talk about vaccines since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. Today I'm going to discuss what vaccines are, the possible ideas of uh, the COVID-19 vaccines under study and more specifically the RNA vaccines and less of the traditional vaccines. I would like to warn you though that there is no COVID-19 vaccine out there when this video is being recorded. However, this could change soon as a large amount of research is being done on COVID-19 vaccine. My name is uh, Dr. Robert Jurugo and if you are new here, this channel is The Health Mindset where we bring you the latest on COVID-19, public health research, epidemiology and tips for students. Subscribe, hit the like button, comment and share with your friends and network. Health Mindset, educating you on health and career development. So how do vaccines work? Traditional vaccines work by providing the body with a dead or weakened form of the virus. Viruses have surface proteins known as antigens and your immune system produce antibodies that combine these antigens and kill the virus. Your immune system has memory and knows which antibodies it will produce in future if it's reinfected, making it much easier to fight uh, the virus the second time around. Many companies are currently working on a traditional vaccine, but according to the WHO, no traditional vaccine will be available for at least one year, if not for the next 18 months. Below are the headline candidates of vaccines and hyperimmune globulins for uh, the prevention of COVID-19. Maybe the possibility of an RNA vaccine is more compelling. RNA vaccinations do not give the body a dead form of the virus, but they literally send your body strands of RNA instead. RNA strands are like cell instructions, and RNA vaccines advise cells about how to create antigens that are usually located on the surface of the virus. The body then produces the antigen on its own and then produces the antibodies to protect against the antigen. When the virus then infects you, the body will recognize the same antigens and create the necessary antibodies. RNA vaccines have a range of benefits over conventional vaccines. First of all, they are better because you are not literally being infected with the virus, only its surface proteins. Second of it, they can be mass produced easily and rapidly. Recent RNA vaccine trials in the world include the following. The US National Institute of Health is currently collaborating with Moderna, a Boston biotech firm that manufactures RNA and the FDA is likely to approve it as it has indicated that it intends to uh, use all the regulatory autonomy granted to it by the US Congress to ensure the most effective and timely production of vaccines uh, to counter COVID-19. Therefore, an RNA vaccine could be available earlier than traditional vaccines. Second of it is the Oxford vaccine trials that are being studied and they seem to cause a great deal of immunity already. The coronavirus vaccine developed by Oxford University appears safe and already causes an immune response. Trials involving more than 1,000 participants have shown that the vaccines have contributed to antibodies and T-cells that combat coronavirus. The results are very positive, but it is still too early to say if this is enough to provide safety and more detailed studies are underway. How is the Oxford vaccine working? The vaccine named CHAD or X1 NCOV-19 is being produced at record rates. This is made of a genetically modified virus that causes or brings a common cold in chimpanzees. This has been extensively modified first so it cannot cause infections in humans and then make it appear more like coronavirus. 
Scientists achieved so by passing the genetic instructions of the coronavirus spike proteins, the crucial tool it uses to invade our cells to the vaccines they were developing. This means that uh, the vaccine resembles coronavirus and then the immune system will learn how to fight it. So what are T-cells? What are antibodies? To date, much of the attention on coronavirus has been on antibodies. But these are only one aspect of our immune defense. Antibodies are small proteins produced by immune system which stick to the uh, virus surface. T cells, a type of white blood cells, help organize the immune system and are able to identify and kill which of the body's cells is infected. Nearly all effective vaccines cause both an antibody response and a response from T cells. T cells levels peaked 14 days after vaccination and after 28 days, antibodies levels peaked. The test did not run long enough to understand how long the immunity could last, the research in uh, Lancet showed. They are extremely promising and scientists believe safety can be correlated with this form of response. But the main thing that everyone needs to know is that the vaccine works, it offers security and everybody really wants to know that. The study showed that 90% of the people developed neutralizing antibodies after one dose. Only 10 people were given two doses and all of them developed neutralizing antibodies. At the moment, the amount required to provide safety is unclear, but it is assumed that the response can be maximized with the second dose. Is it safe? Yeah, but there are side effects. There were no harmful side effects from the use of the vaccine, but about 17% had a fever and more than 6 in 10 patients had headaches. The scientific experts said this could be handled with uh, paracetamol or panadol. What are the next steps of the trial? Findings so far have been positive, but their main priority is to ensure that the vaccine is safe enough uh, to provide uh, to the citizens worldwide. The research cannot demonstrate that the vaccine uh, would either prevent people from becoming ill or that there are symptoms of COVID-19. More than 10,000 people will take part in the next level of trials in the United Kingdom. However, the trial has also been extended to other countries as coronavirus rates are low in the United Kingdom and making it difficult to know if the vaccine is safe. There will be a large trial involving over 30,000 participants in the US as well as 2,000 in South Africa and 5,000 in Brazil. There are also demands for challenge experiments to be carried out in which vaccinated people are deliberately infected with the coronavirus. Nonetheless, due to the lack of medication, there are legal issues related to this. When am I going to get the coronavirus vaccine, you may ask. A coronavirus vaccine could be known to be successful by the end of the year 2020, but it will not be widely available. Health and care staff should be prioritized as those who are known to be at high risk from COVID-19 due to their age or a medical condition. Nonetheless, universal vaccination is likely to take place as early as 2021, even if everything goes to plan. So what progress has been made with other vaccines? The Oxford vaccine is not the first to enter this point, with similar findings released by the groups in the US and China. The US firm Moderna was out of the blocks for the first time and its vaccine would produce neutralizing antibodies. They inject coronavirus RNA, its genetic code, which in then starts to produce viral proteins to cause an immune response. BioNTech and Pfizer have had good outcomes using their RNA vaccines. A methodology close to that of Oxford developed in China also seems optimistic. Nevertheless, both of these methods are at the absolute limits of research and have not yet been shown to, sh to function. Less conventional approaches for producing vaccines are now being studied. For example, the company Valneva takes the entire virus, inactivates it and then injects it 
using traditional methods of vaccine production. In total, there are 23 coronavirus vaccines in clinical trials uh, around the world and another 140 in the earliest stages of the production. Now, let's learn about hyperimmune globulin eventually. Hyperimmune globulin uh, is a blood plasma rich in antibodies from treated patients. Basically, if you have had coronavirus and you have healed, your blood has coronavirus antibodies circulating through it. This technology is not yet thoroughly established, but the hope is that you might donate some of your antibodies rich blood that will then be processed into your blood plasma and the antibodies that we call hyperimmune globulin. If you take this hyperimmune globulin and place it in someone else's bloodstream, you make it immune to the virus. It's worth remembering that hyperimmune globulin gives passive immunity because the body does not produce the antibodies itself. It is only being given them. It ensures that while you will get instant immunity, it only lasts as long as the antibodies as your body cannot produce any replacements. It is not the case for vaccinations that give active immunity, meaning the body learns how to produce the antibodies itself and the immunity lasts a lot longer. Although hyperimmune globulin is awesome, it does come with some ethical concerns. It cannot be generated in a lab, so it has to come from somewhere, which means that you either have two options. You handle hyperimmune globulin as a person's property or you run an exclusive voluntary scheme. An exclusive voluntary scheme would mean that you could donate hyperimmune globulin free of charge and the government would have influence over how it would be distributed. Benefits of this choice is for that those who need it most will get it while if you let people choose who to give or even sell their hyperimmune globulin to it means those family members or if you are selling it the wealthy get protection and bad luck uh, if you are not in one of those groups the benefits of this choice however is that people are far more likely to donate their hyperimmune globulin if they either get to sell it or at least get to choose whomever it goes to and this could end up into a controversy for more on COVID-19, epidemiological research and tips on your professional development, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload new videos. Thanks for listening and waiting for next